2001, my friend and I went up to her aunt's cabin for the weekends in the middle of nowhere, Mississippi. On the way back home, we fucked up and tempted fate by talking about who of our friends we would call if something happens, like our car breaking down or something. Sure enough, doing 60, her engine just dies, and we maneuver to the side of the road and try not to freak out. Nervously laughing, we pull out our phones to make our calls, but no dice, zero bars. Now we're freaking out. There's been nothing in sight for miles, but we do see a light from a trailer off the road up ahead, and we hash out whether to go ask for help or what to do. Finally, we decide we have to go knock and ask to use their phones to call for help. We walk up the long gravel drive, and as we're climbing the steps, my friend tells me not to worry and shows me the butt of a pistol she had tucked in the back of her pants, which honestly just made me worry more. At that point, I felt like my knees were knocking loud enough to rattle the windows and announce our presence, but I raise my hand and knock on the door. An old bearded white guy in a tattered white tank top answers and looks us up and down. In response to our request for use of his phone, he slowly draws out, We don't have phones round here. As we're looking from him to each other and back, trying to process a reality where there are places without phone lines in the new millennium in America, we hear the crunch of footsteps on the gravel drive behind us and turn. Up walks a young couple to ask if they could use a phone because their car has broken down and they don't have any bars on their cell. At this point, I'm sincerely freaking out because I've seen the hills have eyes and I'm quite convinced that all sorts of terrible things are going to happen to us this night, probably the most pleasant of which will be death. I was calculating the odds of a backwoods Mississippi guy having an actual EMP cannon This had to be some kind of trap, or maybe one of those hidden camera gotcha kind of shows that were so popular in the 90s, like that one Shannon Darty hosted, where they scared the shit out of people for laughs. He offers to drive us to the nearest payphone, and my friend and I quietly discuss our options. Somehow she convinces me that we should go, and she'll protect us all if he tries anything. We agree to take the ride and thank him following him around the side of the trailer to his windowless white van. I balked hard at this point, but ultimately, we all loaded up and I prepared myself for the worst while silently praying as the four of us climbed in the back. I was simultaneously making peace with my life and centering myself for a potential fight to the death. Obviously, we made it. He drove us about 20 miles to a phone, and we called the cavalry without further incident. He chuckled a bunch about how weird it was that two couples' cars had broken down outside his place that night. To this day, that is the creepiest and most incredulously weird night of my life. One or two months ago, my girlfriend and I went out to our favorite bar. The drive is a tad longer than an hour to our place from the bar, primarily on barren interstate after the first 15 minutes, save for a few rural exits and one rest stop a little over halfway home. My girlfriend was sober that night and was driving. I had a bit to drink and was feeling warm and tipsy. I asked my girlfriend to make a quick stop at the rest stop so I could pee. Thanks beer. This is a normal stop for us to make if one of us has been drinking, since the rest area has its own direct exit and entrance, so it's faster than taking an actual exit into a town for a gas station. The rest area has only one road in and one out, and is surrounded by trees to the point that you can't see the facility from the freeway. It has wooded walking trails. By the time I hopped out of the car at the rest stop, it was sometime around 3 a.m., As mentioned, this is a fairly regular stop, and until that day, the only person I had seen in that rest stop around that time of night was the guy who maintains it. I walk in. The vending area is empty and completely silent. I make my way over to the men's room and push it open to be immediately startled by this old man, maybe mid-sixties or so, standing immediately to the left of the door inside the bathroom. 
He was wearing what I can only describe as an inspector gadget coat and slacks. I noticed he had a cell phone in his hand when I opened the door, but it was hanging down at his side and the screen was not lit up. He stares at me and I stare back for a split second. Then I get over it and pass him to head over to the urinals and take the urinal closest to the sinks. When I noticed he made no indication that he was going to walk out, there's basically a wall of mirrors stretched out for enough that I can watch him in the mirror while I'm at the urinal. I unzip and keep my eyes on the mirror, but I make sure not to turn my head at all. By the time I look in the mirror, his phone is up in his hand and on as if he were texting, but he seems to be staring at me rather than at the phone. Either way, he definitely was not looking at his phone. A very long 60 seconds pass, and I absolutely cannot piss with this silent guy staring at my back from the door. Then in the mirror, I notice him take a small slow step forward. I tell myself that I'm just tipsy and imagining it to just get on with my piss and GTFO. Then he takes a more obvious step forward, and I put it in my pants while I speed walk to the back handicap stall and lock the door. I went to the back where my feet were invisible and texted my girlfriends about the creepy guy inside with me. I sit and wait to hear the door open, signaling him leaving, but it still doesn't. After possibly the longest eight minutes of my life, I hear the door open and close. I wait another two minutes and finally pee in the stall though. I crack the stall door first. Luckily the bathroom isn't huge and I had almost complete visibility of the room from the stall I picked. I saw no signs of anyone else, so I walked out, washed my hands, and beelined it back to the parking lot. I finally made it back to the car and asked my girlfriend what car the old guy got into. She turns to me wide-eyed and says, He didn't get into one. He just walked across the parking lot and went into the tree line with the rest stop being the only thing on the very short on-off ramps, and the other closest civilization being five miles by interstate. I don't know where that guy was going. Later I realized is, although the rest area main room is small, there's a second entrance and exit on the side that goes into the patio back into the woods. I forget about it because I never use it. But if that guy had somehow managed to get a jump on me, he easily could have pulled me out of that door, and my girlfriend wouldn't have even seen it. I don't know if that was his plan, and I ruined it when I made my dash for the stall. But regardless, old man creeping in the rest stop bathroom in the wee hours. Let's not meet again. I was a 20-year-old college student, and my friend and I were living and working near her college for the summer. A guy she worked with invited us to a party at his place. The two of us went, along with three other friends. We turned out to be the only females at the party. There were at least twice as many guys there. After drinking and playing a few drinking games, people started to leave. A large group of guys were invited to another party and left to go there. Then, our three other friends decided to go too. It was down to the host, my roommate, and the two other guys. For some reason, maybe we ran out of alcohol, we decided to go to this other party. I had a few drinks, but not enough that I was seriously impaired. My roommate, though, was pretty tipsy. She was walking with her friend from work, and the other two guys who had been talking to me at the party were walking close to me and talking to me. At one point, my friend and her coworker were walking far enough from us to be out of earshot. The two guys told me that they knew of a shortcut and tried to get me to follow them down a dark alley. I told them I wanted to stick with the group. They tried to persist me for a few minutes, but I was adamant that I not be separated from my roommate. Somehow mysteriously, we never found the party. The details are a bit fuzzy, but I think they couldn't find the exact location. This was the mid-1990s, so no one had a cell phone to call or text to confirm a location. My roommate told her coworker she wanted to walk around to find another party, because she wasn't ready to go home yet. There were lots of people out, and often you would run into someone who would invite you somewhere. 
I told her I just wanted to go home. I was desperate to get away from those guys. My roommate was feeling good and just not having it. The two guys started to whisper to one another, but I was able to hear some of what they were saying. One said, No, didn't you hear what she said? They live with four guys. This was true. We had four male roommates, which at some point had come up in conversation earlier. This immediately set off more alarm bells. I continued to argue with my friend, and eventually she realized we weren't going to find another party. The two creepy guys left, and her coworker walked us home. On the way home, I told them I wanted to leave because those guys were scaring me, and why? If this were to happen now, I would call those guys out in front of everyone and make a scene. Hi friends, thanks so much for hanging out with me tonight. I hope you enjoyed these stories. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to hear more from me. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful night. Please take care of yourself and sweet dreams.